Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our text recorded in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. It's in Jesus' name, amen. This is a story of Arnie and Elsie. My first building campaign as a pastor came in my second year of ministry. The senior pastor at the church I served, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Napoleon, Ohio, dumped the project on me, which was okay. It was a good way to learn. Of course, I didn't feel that way at the time. No, I felt more like I was being dumped on. The project was a list of repairs and improvements for the church totaling $275,000. Now, this was way back in 1992, and this was a very large church, so relatively speaking, not that big a project. But not everyone in the church was in favor of the long list of things that needed to be done. In fact, we were trying to do so many different things Almost everyone could find something to object to, which I've found to be nearly always true with large-scale church projects. Again, likely one of the reasons why the senior pastor dumped it on me. We put together a committee. We developed a pledge campaign. We did mailings and mailings and mailings and tapped into the big givers. We did all the stuff that the book said we were supposed to be doing. On Pledge Sunday, we totaled up the commitments and the cash in hand, $290,000. If I remember correctly, I was very pleased. And I'm sure I let the senior pastor know how pleased I really was. <clears throat> on Monday, I got a call at the office. The call was from one of my older members, a semi-retired farmer. Farmers... As the old saying go, they don't really retire, they just get put out to pasture. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was Arnie. Arnie. Now, Arnie, he, you know, he wasn't exactly a frequent flyer at church, you know, but when he did come to church, he always put on his new set of bib overalls. I remember that. And he sat well back, close to the exits. Arnie was a lifetime bachelor, and he lived on the edge of Napoleon, along with his sister, Elsie. Arnie asked if I could come over. It was about the building campaign. Sure, I said, hesitantly, expecting another round of, why are you doing this, and why are you doing it this way, kind of grilling. But when I got there, Arnie was already seated at the kitchen table with his checkbook in hand. He said... Pastor, I wanted to make a donation to the campaign, to which I felt compelled to tell Arnie, uh, we're, it's over, and you know, we're okay. Uh, in fact, we've actually over-pledged. We have more pledges than we need. And Arnie simply acted as if he didn't hear me and started writing out the check. $40,000. Now, at that point, point in my life and in my ministry, I had never seen a check for $40,000, so I'm not sure I was really able to put on a good poker face and accept that check as graciously as I should. But I was able to say something to the effect of, uh, Arnie, that, that's a lot of money, with a you know, kind of question mark hanging out there. Arnie assured me, not a problem. Indeed, it's not really even a sacrifice. Pastor, he said, you see what is left of my farm when you drove in? Uh, yeah. You see all those houses right next door, going up right next door? Yeah, I responded. Well, that used to be my farm, my land. As Napoleon grows, my farm gets smaller and smaller. In fact, I now have more money than I know what to do with. I don't have any kids. So I feel as I might as well give it away to the church. Now after a little bit of chit chat, long enough to realize that Arnie really wasn't big into chit chat, I thanked Arnie again, got up from the kitchen table. Elsie, his sister, 
had been sitting in the corner of the kitchen the entire time. She had not said a word up to this time, but she was waiting. Don't you think he should get a door with his name on it for that? Don't you think he should get a door with his name on it for that? She asked, referring to the check. Well, Elsie, uh, we don't really do that at our church, I tried to explain, and to explain the fact that literally hundreds of people had already made pledges and had given money. Some had given large amounts, some had given small amounts, and that was the way it worked at church. We give as we have received. I don't think Elsie was satisfied with the explanation, but Arnie's check cash anyway. <clears throat> Matthew 6, verse 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. In this section of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is talking about giving. But not just giving money, he's talking about how we give our acts of righteousness, our good deeds before God. Indeed, the three areas of righteousness that he is talking about are giving, praying, and fasting. Here are those three verses back to back. Matthew 6, 2. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you. That's where we get the expression, don't toot your own horn as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. And then Matthew 6, 5, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. And then Matthew 6, 16, and when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Their reward. A reward they have already received from others. Indeed, praised by others, seen by others. But Jesus says, there's a different reward system out there. A reward system that is heavenly. Indeed, a reward system that is eternal. A reward system designed and developed by his Father. Our Father, who art in heaven. Matthew 6, 3-4. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. I recently applied for a new credit card, and I had to run the gauntlet of choices. Reward choices, which is apparently how they sell credit cards to you today, folks. And folks, it is a sell. What is most rewarding to you? Frequent flyer mileage, cash back, dining awards, travel awards, low interest for a certain period of time. And I looked for a credit card that would reward me with no interest ever. <laughs> Not just no interest, no fees, but no interest ever. And apparently they don't make that kind of credit card. They don't give out that kind of a reward. But what Jesus is talking about here is the most basic, indeed the most needed of human reward systems. Recognition. Recognition from one another. Philosopher and psychologist William James puts it like this. The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Mary Kay Ash, you know, the pink Cadillac lady? You remember those, those days? Okay, cosmetics lady. There are two things people want more than sex and money. 
recognition, and praise. And even Mother Teresa gets into the game. There is more hunger for love and appreciation in this world than for bread. When we do a good deed, it's natural for us to want to be noticed, to be appreciated, to be recognized, to receive that pat on the back. Didn't Jesus understand this? Yeah, I'm sure he did. But this is his kingdom he's talking about. And it's an upside down kind of kingdom. And in the kingdom of heaven, things work a little bit differently than they do in the kingdoms of this world. Including what motivates us to be the people Jesus wants us to be. So let's go back to the beginning, Matthew 6, 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people. In order to be seen by them. <coughs> For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Two things. Acts of righteousness and a reward. Indeed, a secret reward from our Father. Now once again we are reminded that Jesus is preaching here to his disciples. To his followers. Indeed, he is encouraging them to let their light so shine that they may give glory to who? To our Father, so that people might see our Father better. And the three acts of righteousness that Jesus is talking about here are giving alms to the poor, praying and how we pray, and fasting. Very specific ways of expressing our faith. Very specific ways of living out our Christianity. Indeed, in the middle of Jesus' instruction here on the secret, Jesus introduces the Lord's Prayer to his disciples. Now, I jumped over that part of this reading because during the season of Lent, we're going to be chewing through the Lord's Prayer petition by petition on Wednesday nights. Ash Wednesday, just a couple of weeks away, February 26th. For most of us, the last time that we have looked closely at those petitions of the Lord's Prayer was back in confirmation class when we were 13, 14 years old. So I encourage you to make Lenten midweek worship plan part of your Lenten journey this year. There will be rewards. Okay. Fasting, fasting is not something that common among Lutheran Christians. Indeed, many of us might even think that fasting, that's more of a Catholic kind of thing. But fasting isn't really giving up meat on Lent just so that we can attend the local Friday night fish fry. No, fasting is not eating at all. At all. Which is probably why the Pharisees got that grumpy look on their faces when they fasted. Matthew 6, 16. And when you fast... Do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. Fasting, when practiced correctly, is simply a way to take the focus off of our human, physical, bodily needs in order to spend the time focusing on our spiritual needs, our faith, our relationship with Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, too often, it can simply become another way for us to show others just how spiritual, how devoted, how truly Christian we really are. And that gets us back to Jesus' point. Why are we doing what we are doing? Are we giving to the poor, or for that matter, are we giving to the church so that we might be recognized? Are we praying? Or are we worshiping simply so that others might see us here worshiping? Oh, there go the Joneses pulling out of their driveway on a Sunday morning. I'm sure they're heading to church. Are we here so that others might see us singing and praising and worshiping? Are we doing our good deeds with the expectation that others are looking? And with it, expecting that normal appreciation, that normal attention, the rewards that come from doing a good thing. Matthew 6, 17 through 18. 
But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Father will reward you. He will reward you. Apparently, God the Father knows us well. He knows that we are reward-based people. He knows that we need a pat on the back from time to time. He knows that we as people operate best when we feel loved, thanked, appreciated. And he will reward you. So, what is the reward? Well, that, my friends, that's the secret. In fact, three times in this passage, Jesus says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you in secret. But then Jesus doesn't actually tell us what the father's reward will be. Why? Because then we would simply be working for the reward, not for the father. Then we would be motivated by the father's praise not by the Father himself. Then we would simply be trading one reward system, an earthly people-based reward system, for a heavenly one. Now, Jesus does give us some clues, some clues to the secret of Christian living. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. First, that the rewards banked in heaven, these treasures in heaven, will never rust or break or be stolen. These rewards are permanent. They can never be taken away. But even more importantly, when we begin to live in this upside-down kingdom sort of way, when we begin to understand that the secret rewards we receive by our Father in heaven are for, worth far more than silver or gold, and even far more than any reward we could receive from men, something changes within us. Something happens within us here on earth. Indeed, something begins to happen to our hearts for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Our heart begins to find its rest. Our heart begins to find its rest. Not in the praise of men. Not in the momentary earthly rewards from others. Not in earthly praise and recognition. No, our hearts begin to find their rest in him. In the rewards of our Father, our Father who is in heaven, where our true treasure lies. That's not all. Matthew 6, 22 through 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? When we begin to live in this upside-down kingdom sort of way, when we begin to love the secret rewards of our Father more than the words and praises of our fellow men, it's like a light shining in on our whole body. The eye is the lamp of the body, meaning when we know that God's light is more important to us than the spotlight of man, our whole attitude our heart and mind starts to fill with light, the light of Christ. And then finally, a warning. Jesus gives us a warning. Indeed, a simple warning, one that you have heard time after time, many times. In fact, I've heard, I'm sure you've heard many a money sermon based just on this one text. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God 
and money. Simply put, choose your reward system. The praise of men or the secret. The heavenly rewards from God our Father. Don't you think he should get a door with his name on it or something? Uh, Elsie. Uh, no, no, I don't think he should because Arnie, Arnie has already gotten his reward. But it's a secret. A secret between him and his heavenly father. And how great, how great that reward is in Jesus' name.